Who is Karl Denke? Denke was born in Münsterberg, Silesia, which is what was once known as the Kingdom of Prussia. It is now called Ziembice, Poland, coming from a wealthy family that worked as farmers. At childhood, Denke proved to be difficult for his parents to raise. At the age of 12, he even ran away from home. When he graduated from elementary school, he started an apprenticeship under a gardener and then started life on his own at the age of 25. It was at this time that his father died, to which the farm was taken over by his older brother and Denka himself bought a piece of land with the money from his inheritance. However, farming did not go well for him, so he sold his land as a result. He eventually purchased a little house on what is now called Stawawa Street. Unfortunately, what savings he had left were lost due to the uncontrollable inflation occurring at the time. Though he was forced to sell his house, Denka refused to move out. He still lived in a little apartment on the right side of the ground floor of the house and continued to occupy a nearby shop. Denka soon became well-liked in the community and came to work as a church organ player. Murders, Arrest and Suicide Karl Denka, for unknown reasons, began murdering homeless vagrants and poor travelers. His first known victim was Ida Lawner in 1903. Six years later, in 1909, he killed 25-year-old Emma Sander. Another slaughterhouse worker, Edward Troutman, was found guilty of her murder, but was released in 1926 after the truth was discovered. His last known victim was Rokas Pollock. Denka also kept a ledger recording his murders. He is also believed to have sold the flesh of his victims in nearby Breslau as pickled meat to unsuspecting customers, advertised as pork. On the 21st of December 1924, Denka lured a homeless drifter named Vincenz Olivier into his home with the promise of 20 Fennig if he wrote a letter for him. Olivier had been directed to Denka by a townswoman, as Denka was known for his charitable nature. According to Olivier, he had sat down at a desk after being handed a pen and paper, but turned to his host after becoming perplexed when Denka dictated, Adolf du Vetter wanst? Adolf, you fat slob. Just in time to see him in the process of raising a pickaxe to strike Olivier's head. The victim managed to duck, receiving a deep gash, eight centimeters in length and two centimeters wide, to the temple before he was able to wrestle the weapon from Denka in the ensuing struggle. Olivier escaped through the front door, screaming that a madman was trying to kill him, attracting the attention of neighbors, who then alerted the authorities. Initially, Olivier's testimony was disregarded due to Denka's reputation among the townsfolk, leading to his arrest for vagrancy and panhandling. The judge, however, insisted on further investigation of Olivier's claims, whereupon Denka was taken in for questioning. He was placed in a holding cell, where he hanged himself just hours later with an unspecified ligature, the exact nature of which varies from account to account, but most commonly a handkerchief and or shoelace, before an interrogation could take place. In light of this, Denka's home was searched and police found the gruesome truth of his murders and cannibalism, discovering unidentified flesh that was being cured inside of two tubs filled with brine, a box with an assortment of human bones and human fat stored inside pots. They also discovered several items, including shoes, belts, braces, and shoelaces, that analysis determined were made with tanned human skin. While the exact number of his victims is unknown, Denka's ledger had 31 names recorded, including Olivier, who had escaped, confirming at least 30 victims. However, due to the large number of body parts found in his home, Denka's body count was estimated to be as high as 42 or even higher. 